Good morning, good morning. It's day 12 of Vlogmas. I'm Christine and welcome to Gemini Stitches, my blogging sewing channel. So today we are going to open day 12 of the Fabric Godmother calendar and the sixth snag tights. Gosh, I hope they're okay this time. The last ones were quite comical. So let's see. We'll open Fabric Godmother first. Ooh. Oh, this one's got a definite rattle to it, so there's definitely something inside. Let's have a see. Ooh. A little tin with something inside. A little surprise in a little tin. Safety pins. Now, I'm not saying it's not a good idea to have a tin with your safety pins in because I am notorious for not being able to find them. And indeed, at the last sewing social, I had to go around the room and ask anybody, did they have a safety pin? Because I needed to thread elastic through something. Was it the time before? So, good little gift, but not what I expected for a £120 calendar, I've got to be honest. Don't know how I'm going to price this one up, but it can't be worth more than a few quid, can it? Not in my head, anyway. So this week, I'm going to have to start totting this up this week because it seems like it's going a bit peak tongue, doesn't it? So let's hope that snag tights. I'm dreading opening these after last time. Go back and watch the day before yesterday because they were so funny. Not sure I'm going to laugh a second time round. You're gonna laugh yourself. Oh my god. Are they serious? Um Yes they are. <laughs> We've got my little pony <laughs> tights. Which are quite cute, I guess. Not sure I'm gonna wear these. <laughs> Definite dog walking tights for me. Oh my god. Okay. So when we're halfway, which we are now, we're on day six, I'm gonna get them all out and we'll go through them. So shall we do that now and see where we're up to with snag tights? Give me a minute. <laughs> okay, then let's do a round up of our snag tight advent calendar because we've had six so far and that's halfway so on day one i got these babies love them to bits so that's one win then day two now i might not be doing these in the right order but i've definitely got six pairs of tights so then then come day two we got these with the cats on They're not a win, so 50-50 so far. The next pair with these. I just want to show you something because I was going to wear these the other day. And they've got a little hole in them. Now it's obviously in the manufacturing process, I think. And I didn't say anything when I opened them because I wanted to give snag tights the opportunity to put things right. And the good news is that they did. And I've got a new pair of these tights on the way. Now I can do an invisible mend on that. So I've got two pairs of these raspberry pink tights and I love them. So that's a win, even though there was a hole in because I'm getting a replacement. Good old snag tights. I love a good customer service. 
Then we had these. I think they were probably made for Easter. Chicks on them, possibly. They're a no. They're definitely a no. So, 50-50 again. And then we got these, which are gorgeous. Definite win. And then these from today, I mean, really? Do adults actually wear these? If anybody's got a little girl who's maybe a teenager, I don't know, a tall 10, 11 year old, well, I'm only five foot. These tights are a size C on snag tights. So have a look at the sizing. If you've got a child who would wear these, you can have them, let me know, and I will post them out to you gladly. So there are no. So three good, three not. So if it carries on like that, this advent with the holder, I've got to say, but we'll just look at tights. The holder is just an added Brucey bonus, isn't it? So if I end up with six pairs of tights for £64, it's not very value for money, is it? Because that works out at... What's that? £10 each, more than £10 for a pair of tights. And I know snag tights aren't cheap. But when you get them on offer, you can get them cheaper than that. But it's been fun, hasn't it? Anyway, I'm not going to say just yet. We've got six more pairs to open and it might work in my favour in the second half of the advent. So, but at the moment, we're on a 50-50 split for sure. And then the last thing I want to talk about this morning is the deck of the day. Now, please excuse this one, it's been packed away and it's all squidged, but it is. Mine's a heart shape, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a scrappy fabric wreath. Now, mine's pretty boring, if I'm honest, because it's greys and blues and red, but if you've got loads of fabric scraps, that are bright colours, I think one of these would look stunning. And all you do is cut strips of fabric all the same length and then you just tie them. You just tie them onto it and that's what you get. Now I used one of these. So you tie all around there, all around there and all around there and that's what creates that 3D effect. So it's a good one to do with the kiddos and it'll keep them quiet for hours and hours tying those round. I will guarantee they'll probably get bored and want to do something else. But, you know, it's a good way of using your fabric scraps. And I think they're quite cute. So I'm going to hang that up in my sewing room somewhere. I'm running out of space to be honest. I need to have a good tidy in here because there's fabric everywhere. I've got that much to do, it's unbelievable. So what am I doing today? I've got the cake to bake this morning. Yay! I'm looking forward to that. So we'll do that together this morning. Then I want to get another chunk of my Christmas dress done. So I'll let you know where I get up to with that. And then I've got to start making some Christmas crowns and Christmas crackers for Christmas Day. I had them all made last year and can I find them? Not a chance. God knows where they are. The hubsters probably hid them in the loft, but we don't put anything in the loft actually. Our Christmas decorations are put up in the rafters in the garage. I know. He puts them up there so that I can't get to them and I can't put them up early enough. I know what he does. He says it's the best place for them. That's a matter of opinion. 
I don't ask him to go back up there and see if there's any another bag that he's missed. Maybe I will. We'll see. If we run out of time, he's going to have to find them. But today is try and get the dress done and get the cake made. It's a plan. So I'll bob back later and let you know how I'm getting on. Happy Vlogmas! It's cake baking time. It's a bit dark and gloomy in here because it's still quite early in the morning and I want to get the cake into the oven before I walk the doggos because it's going to take a couple of hours and I've got a busy day. So we're going to put all the ingredients, chuck them into the bowl all together and then mix them up with a hand mixer. So I'm going to angle the camera now down so that you can see the bowl, not me, and I'll talk you through what I'm chucking in it. I forgot to show you my new Christmas cake mixing tool. How gorgeous is that? It's got a beautiful Christmas tree on one side and then on the other it has all the conversions from cups to fluid ounces to teaspoons, to tablespoons, to millilitres. How clever is that? I'll use it because I follow recipes, but I thought it was a very good idea. Quite sturdy. I think I paid about a five for it at Boundary Mill. So yeah, my new Christmas spatula. Loving it. Right, let's get the ingredients into my bowl. So there we go. I've put the bowl onto my weighing scale so I'm ready so that I can just weigh as I go if you're like gosh this is heavy already so this is all the fruit that's been soaking with the brandy that goes in smell that brandy oh should have smell a vision that is Gorgeous. So that's the base, fruit base of our cake. Just grab my list of ingredients. So the next thing is 225 grams of self-raising flour, sifted. Okay, so let's grab some self-raising flour. So I've, re so I've reset my scales to zero. I've got my sieve. My plain flour is going in. So self-raising flour, 225 grams. Just keep going with it. 45 grams, got a long way to go, haven't we? Look, flour everywhere. But that's part of the fun of baking. Oh, it's only making 60, we're getting there. Two hundred and twenty-five grams of flour. Now it says just throw them all in, but I'm just going to give the flour a little bit of a mix so that when I put my mixer in, it doesn't go everywhere and we end up with a snow cloud. I know it's Christmas, but I don't want to be cleaning my kitchen that much. Okay. Flour blended in. Oh, 
Next, one and a half level teaspoons of mixed spice. Ground mixed spice. Next, one and a half level teaspoons. A little bit more for good measure. Then three level teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, three. Give that a little bit of a stir again. Just because I can. Cool, this is going to be one scrummy cake, we hope. Right, what's next? 150 grams of softened butter. And on the side of a butter packet. See if you can see it. You get the 50 gram measuring lines. So I'm going to use those to kind of figure out 150 grams, but we will be weighing it. Sorry, with my scales, I'll put them back to zero. So that's 50, 1, 150. I'm breaking them off in. Fifty gram pieces, and then breaking them up as I put them in the bowl. Put them in in one solid piece. A little bit more, for good measure. So that's the butter. We'll give it a little bit of a mix. And when you come to use the mixer. It's going to take a good mix, if you me, from memory. Right, next. One hundred and fifty grams of dark muscovado sugar. Oh, well, dark muscovado sugar. 150 grams. Here we go. This bowl is getting a bit full. I hope we're nearly done. The grated zest of one small orange and the grated zest of one small lemon. So we're nearly there. The last three ingredients are the grated zest of an orange and a lemon. Put that in. Now the recipe says 50 grams of walnuts and 50 grams of mixed chopped nuts. Now I've got a mixture of walnuts and Brazil nuts and they're going in because that's what I have in my bucket. Give that a quick mix.
Then the last ingredient is three large eggs. And then we'll be ready to pop it into my pre-greased tin in the oven. Okay, so there's the cake, all nicely mixed and ready to go into grab it my greased in wine tin. So wish me luck with this one, it may take me a while, I can't lift the bowl, it's too darn heavy. So we'll fast forward through this bit and then I'll tell you how I put it into the oven. So there we go, we'll just spread it out evenly along the top and fingers crossed in two hours we will have a Christmas cake all ready to ice. So the last thing I want to do to stop the top of the cake burning because it goes in for two hours is to put a double layer of silicone or waste fruit paper waste fruit paper on the top with a little hole in the middle so I'll just do that and then we'll get it in the oven the cake's done are you ready to see it? it's still in its tin it's still in its tin and it's still hot but how gorge does that look? Smells so Christmassy. So that's gonna cool in the tin now and then I'll take it out and leave it to cool on a wire rack, probably overnight, and then wrap it in some grease brew paper and tin foil and put it in a tin. And then every two, three days, I'm gonna feed it with a coating of sherry. And then when we get to about four days before Christmas, I'll do the marzipan and then the icing. But all done for now. Hey, I've done my sewing for the day. I had a change of heart and I didn't end up sewing. <laughs> oh, hello, baby. She wants to get on the movie. I didn't end up making any more of my Christmas day dress. My head just wasn't in the right headspace for it today. So what I have done is almost finished 12 Christmas crackers. I know, cut them out and everything. And maybe Christmas cake, good day. So I'll just show you what I've done. Ta-da, they're the ones for the men. So they've got sparkles in the middle. Some beautiful, I've used the, um, Bias binding I got from the Fabric Godmother advent calendar and then they've got some cute day re reindeers on the inside so that's the men's walk and that is what I've done for the ladies absolutely love that fabric oh, upside down and that's got copper bias binding on it. I've just got to edge stitch all the way around in either copper or gold thread and then I think I'm going to put a snap on the middle to hold them around the cracker tubes. If you want to know how I've made these, tomorrow's vlog will be not exactly a so long but a and not a tutorial either, a bit of both. I tell you, I may explain in stages how I make 
my crackers. So bob on tomorrow and watch me then. That's it for today. So happy Vlogmas Day 12 and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Say bye, Esme and Lily. Bye, girls. <laughs>